Welcome to the workshop. Let's build something. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and today we're going to drive on with Project CJ64. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what Project CJ64 is, you can pause this video, click on part one right here and see how the project started. But basically, what this is, is a modern take on my first computer, the Commodore 64, a complete PC inside a super compact mechanical keyboard. And this is the complete PC, the Intel Tiger Lake i7 1165G7 mainboard from my framework laptop. And I guess I should explain this a little better because some people may be unfamiliar with framework and why it would take a mainboard out of a perfectly functional laptop. Fair point. The framework is a fully user serviceable and upgradable laptop. So at some point in the future, you'll be able to upgrade this main board with a newer next generation Intel and maybe even Ryzen powered main board. And when that time comes, this will still be a fully functional and capable PC because it is fully operational on its own. Project CJ64 is an example of a way you can repurpose your own main board when the time comes. So quick recap. This is the first prototype, which consists of a bottom case that houses the main board, and I've kept the expansion bays to be able to use the framework IO expansion cards. Now, just by adding a cover, this can be connected to a display and peripherals and have a complete desktop PC. But I elevated this thing and added a custom 60% mechanical keyboard and I gotta say, for a first draft, I'm pretty happy with the results, but it is a first draft. Some of my measurements were slightly off and I needed to optimize it more for CNC machining. It's also just a raw 3D print, so I refined the design just a bit. I offset the expansion card ports to accommodate for the thicker case walls. So now the expansion ports will fit flush to the case. And now due to the extra case thickness, there's a three millimeters of extra space at the bottom of the expansion cards, which will actually allow me to design and fabricate some thicker expansion cards for ethernet, serial, VGA, capture cards, more to come on that later. I also designed the expansion bays in two parts, just like the laptop enclosure does it. This will make machining the part simpler because I can just use 3D printed inserts for this. So I already epoxy filled, sanded and painted the part. I wanted it more camera ready this time. I added some threaded inserts for mounting the motherboard and the keyboard. And I tapped the tiny M.2 screw holes for attaching the expansion bay inserts. Let's get everything assembled and the main board installed in here. Now notice these threaded inserts are slightly raised. This is so I can perfectly line up the board as the inserts fit. And so I don't put too much pressure on the board from the screws. All right, let's see if this works. Now, one thing I still need to do and I won't do until I get the final machined case back from manufacturing is add the small guide rails to the expansion bay. So the cards just slide in perfectly, but now I just need them to line up on the horizontal axis. Those rails will definitely be helpful. Okay, that works, but these expansion cards do look a little off. They're not quite flush, and that's due to the normal shrinkage you get from 3D printed parts, especially PLA, but the CAD model dimensions 
are perfectly accurate. Now, some other concerns people had about the case was ventilation, and honestly, it shouldn't be a problem. I use the same exact ventilation design as the laptop. Fresh air is drawn in from the bottom, and in fact, the vent area is much larger on this case, and then it's exhausted out the back, just like the laptop, except the exhaust flow isn't impeded by the display in this case, so ultimately the cooling should be better in this. But we want to continue with the keyboard and this is where I made the most significant changes. First, the original PCB I used was, well, crap. I tried reflashing it to get the RGB mode function to work. Long story short, I bricked the board. It was a $20 board, you get what you pay for. So I'm replacing it with this DZ60 from KBD Fans. This is the PCB they use in their very popular Tofu 60 keyboard. And it's a decent board. I went with it because it's the same form factor to fit the build. It works with a USB-C to USB-C cable. And because it's pretty much always available either from KBD fans or other retailers. I actually got this from drop.com because they had the fastest shipping time, well, until FedEx got involved. The only issue with the board design wise is it's under switch RGB, not under glow RGB. So the whole RGB diffusing middle layer on this design is kind of void now. It's also hot swap with a nice brass plate to go along with it. First box down. Now, if you saw my last video, you also know I changed the switch selection from the Gateron Blues to these Halo Clears, which I've lubed and swapped in a 60 gram linear spring. I also changed the keycap selection. Here I have a Dolch keycap colorway, and although it looks great, I wanted to put a modern spin on the Commodore 64 concept, and it just came across as, well, too modern. So unless you know there was a full PC inside, it just looks like a thick mechanical keyboard. So to try to bring a more retro look into it, I got a set of the drop slash dev slash TTY MT3 profile keycaps. These are modeled after the old 1970s IBM beam spring terminals, which the Commodore 64 was heavily influenced by. And finally, the biggest change to the prototype, I completely redesigned the keyboard case itself. Again, this design, while visually stunning, just went too modern in industrial, in my opinion, taking away from the retro vibe I was going for. And when I changed it slightly, going with a silver color and softening the edges, trying to incorporate some of the original C64 design elements, it just didn't work for me. Also, having to manufacture two completely separate and complex CNC machined parts will significantly increase the cost. So, I completely redesigned it and ended up with this, which is a much simpler, very standard keyboard case that looks very much like a modern mechanical keyboard with sharper bezeled edges because the round or soft edges just didn't look right to me. But when you add this very simple plate, you now bring in a subtle design element from the old beam spring terminals and the C64. Also branding, because you know, branding is the thing. So going from this to this has solely occupied my time for almost three weeks now, and there were a few iterations in between. Now, a lot of viewers have expressed interest in longer format videos where you can get a much more in-depth look at my design and fabrication process. Unfortunately, because of how the YouTube algorithm works, if I release a 45 minute to one hour video, the average viewer will only watch a very small percentage of it, 
call it the TikTok effect. And YouTube will see that video is getting a lot less viewer retention than normal and just bury the video. This hurts the channel overall and is why you see most creators videos are all about the same length. But I heard you and to address this, I decided to launch a Patreon channel. This channel will feature raw, mostly uncut, long format videos. For example, the first video that should be uploaded at the same time as this video is how I went from this and all the steps in between to this. I'll also be doing Q&A type videos, behind the scenes stuff, but mostly it's where I can post all the extra stuff that usually hits the editing room floor so to speak. I'll also be posting any giveaway stuff there as well as releasing the plans for the prototype projects I'm working on and possibly doing a very limited release of some elevated systems merch. Most importantly this will help enable me to continue to put the financial investment into projects like this because after two years and almost $40,000 of personal finances put into this channel. I'm at the point where the content I produce has to financially pay for itself. And although I absolutely love doing projects exactly like this and you guys really enjoy it and the content I think is great, the time and money invested here just makes it unfortunately a poor business choice with a negative return on investment and if I'm going to keep the channel alive, I need to take on some sponsors and I'd rather you guys, the devoted audience as my sponsors and not the shady VPN, key resellers and software vendors I've never heard of that flood my inbox with financially lucrative but ethically questionable offers. So that was my sponsorship pitch for the Elevated Systems Patreon. Now let's get this project assembled. gonna hold my opinion on this for now <laughs> no I'm not it looks awesome but it wasn't completely without issues for one when I was soldering up a custom cable to connect the keyboard uh, internally to the main board one of the solder pads just tore off the PCB on the USB-C connector and I only have two on hand I had to go with a temporary option, however that cable is a couple millimeters too thick so I'm not able to screw down completely the left side of the keyboard, which is why this side is higher. Also my keycap base kit didn't have the 1U Alt and Function keys for down here. I'll have to order the extra mod keycap set to get those. Until then, I got this jank solution here. The only other thing is I haven't reprinted a power switch yet, so this one is actually a little too short. For those of you who are wondering, it's just a pin that basically passes through and physically presses the mainboard surface-mounted power switch. Other than that, I love it. 
I mean, it feels great. And the sound, I mean, it's definitely heavily muted by the PLA casing. You saw I included both the laser cut foam and the PCB foam. This is gonna be awesome when it's fully machined aluminum case though. The system is already booted up because when I was doing the test setup, it took a long time to finally get it booted. This is mainly due with the quirk still present with booting the framework mainboard outside of the laptop. The firmware update makes it possible, but it still has some bugs to be worked out. I also overlooked a Wi-Fi antenna location. I mean, when this is all aluminum, it's gonna need one. I did include it in the CAD design. There will be another cutout over here to match the exhaust ports, but this side will be for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signal. I just really didn't need to reprint the whole lower case for that today. Anyway, there it is. I'm actually running Ubuntu today. Not a retro look, but I mean, I guess I can always go full screen terminal. Also, for those of you who are adamant about this being too high to comfortably use, you're correct. This is pretty high for a keyboard. So easy fix. I got this glorious compact wrist rest, which is about the exact height as the frame. So it works perfectly. For those who expressed interest in maybe incorporating the battery into a wrist rest, well, the battery is actually larger than the main board, so any wrist rest would be larger than the system itself. Framework also uses a proprietary battery and connector for the battery, which as a result of the two-way communication between the battery and the main board, I haven't been able to completely trace the pinout, so using a different batteries not really an option. Also, despite what you may have heard, Framework doesn't just hand out the schematics to their stuff, so it's not really worth the effort, in my opinion, especially because this is a desktop system and will be on mains power 24 seven, keeping a lithium ion plugged in and charging at 100% 24 seven will seriously degrade it quickly. And if you think it's a smart battery and that doesn't happen, well, this isn't the case for this battery. Mine's already three to 4% degraded in less than four months. And I don't keep it plugged in when I'm not using it. Anyway, this is the final design for this version of the project. And I'm keeping it simple, not adding the internals from any of the additional expansion hubs or anything else to the system because I wanna keep this very obtainable. Essentially a bare bone kit you can simply drop your old framework main board into and I think it has its most practical use as just the lower main board case as this is a complete desktop computer that you can fit almost in your pocket or Add the keyboard, pick your switches and keycaps, and you have a fully functional, super compact desktop PC. Now, all I have to do is send the plans off to get the manufacturing quote. Hopefully the cost is reasonable and I can have it made. If so, when I get the machined parts back, I'll do a final assembly and testing video so we can see if there's any performance degradation with the main board inside this chassis. I don't really expect there to be. We can grab some thermals, actually expect thermals to be better in here. In the meantime, what about all the other ideas I had and you had, you know, integrating some USB expansion, extra storage, and well, the battery. That's where version two of the CJ64 comes in. The next version of the original Commodore 64 was the Commodore 64C and the upgrade was the Commodore 128. So the CJ64 version two is gonna be less in inspired by the original PC and more of not an exact, but a close replica of the C64C. Now, this is the point where I hope to have some initial CAD models of V2 for some visual reference, but work on V1 has prevented that and the design still lives just in my head. However, it's basically gonna be a much larger version of this that keeps just 
two of the expansion port bays and the other Thunderbolt ports I can use for integrated Thunderbolt or USB expansion hubs to add rear and top IO expansion complete with possibly M.2 NVMe storage. There'll be plenty of room so the battery will be able to be incorporated in the system because the keyboard is going to be a 95% 96 keyboard, which will be mounted on the top face of the deck at about the same angle as the C64C. Now, the big difference with this one is that unlike version one, which should be mass producible, version two is gonna be a one-off DIY project, and I'm gonna construct it from wood and brass. Now, I haven't worked out all the design points yet. Again, it's still mostly working in my mind, but hopefully I should be able to start on the project after the new year. I'll of course keep you all up to date on the progress in my community post and on Twitter and any preliminary work I do on the project, I'll post a video to Patreon. So again, be sure to check that out. Your support for the channel will allow me to keep going with projects like this. For everyone else, hitting that subscribe and like button will also go a long way. I appreciate all the support and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.